So as I struggled, trying to grasp the loss of my friend, my inner warrior lay dying at my feet, and I thought my story didn't matter. Agonitha, or Aggie as many of us called her, she was a longtime friend, and everyone who met her fell in love with her. She was amazing. She was full of life and adventure. She was kind, and she always had a smile on her face. I hadn't seen her in a long time, so I was very excited when I got the opportunity to reconnect with her. She had been gone in BC for a while and had just moved back to the community. She'd messaged me, and we had set up a date for lunch. But of course, sometimes the busyness of life gets in the way, and we postponed this lunch and planned with a promise to definitely reschedule. So I decided that I would invite my friend Aggie uh, to the upcoming Women Talk Okotoks event. I was stepping up to the mic to share my story for the first time, my personal journey through the dark path of suicide. And I was quite looking forward to her support. She sounded very interested, and I was very excited that I was going to be able to see her. So that evening came, and as I sat and watched the door for the entire evening, she never came. She did message me later, and she apologized and promised that we would definitely connect very soon. And I just remembered, I might have had a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> what I lack for in skill, I make up for enthusiasm. Okay, where, are, where am I? Okay, there we go. The adventures of needing glasses to see distance and no glasses for seeing close up. So it's always a fun adventure for me. So, <laughs> so a couple of weeks later, another local event came along and I was asked to participate along with two other amazing women that we would share our journeys through suicide and overcoming adversity, and how through all the struggles of suicide that we could overcome. And I was quite excited about this event. You know, it was just something new that was going on in my life, and I just kind of felt like I was, you know, starting to move forward. So to share this was just amazing. And I thought, well, I'm going to invite my friend Aggie. Here's a way that we'll get our chance to connect. Unfortunately, she was not able to attend that night, but she left me this beautiful message. It was the last message I ever received from her. So while at work, I received a text message. It said, please call me ASAP. This was my friend Pamela. I knew immediately that something was wrong. I tell you, however, I was not prepared for the words that my friend Pamela would tell me. When I called her back and she answered the phone, she said, Michelle, Aggie's gone. She killed herself. I said, no, no, that can't be true. We have got plans to meet for lunch. We're going to catch up together. We're going to visit and we're going to have this amazing time. I don't even think I could breathe in the moments as that heartbreak settled in. It was surreal. I was in denial. I knew that it had to be a mistake. But as the grief and the sadness came, I started to ask myself questions. Where had I failed? It didn't matter that I hadn't seen Aggie in more than two years. How could I not have known that my friend was in crisis? I could have done something. I should have done something. I should have been there for her. If I couldn't save the life of my friend, how could I make a difference? My story didn't matter. 
So my inner warrior, who I was just learning about, so she had just shown up in my own life and was showing me how to find life for me. I could see her dying with heartbreak, laying on the floor of my feet, and I could do nothing. However, there was a conversation a few days later with my friend Pamela. We had just attended the memorial service. And we were sitting in her truck. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, she asked me, do you like stars? Sure. I thought, well, maybe Pamela's on this new story adventure and is just going to do some research. OK, I'll play along. She says, well, do you think stars does a good job? Well, I said, well, of course they do. Then she asked, do you think STARS saves everyone? And I said, well, no. And then the more important questions came. What if STARS had closed their doors after they lost their first patient? What would have happened to the people had they not been there to help save their lives? In the days following, as I wrestled with the aftermath of the tragedy, I realized that Aggie's story and journey was hers alone. I did, however, learn, too, that my story did matter. And I needed to love my friend, I needed to honor her, and I needed to move forward. We all have stories to tell. My mantra was, death is better than life. believing that the world did not need me, and in fact, it would be better without me. While the circumstances that create our life journeys are not of our choosing, finding the courage to share our stories gives us a renewed purpose in life. It helps us find our own feeling, and it lets others know that they are not alone. It is in this courage that I decided that I would share my story and share it in the book, Sacred Hearts Rising, Breaking the Silence, One Story at a Time. I have not arrived, but I strive to move forward every day. Sometimes it's one breath at a time. Sometimes it's one moment at a time. And sometimes it's a day at a time. But I strive to keep going, to never quit. And to my dear friend, Aggie, May you rest now, having found that the peace that you so desperately needed. My message for each of you today is this. Keep going. Keep seeking to find your way. Don't give up. Don't believe the lies this world will tell you. Your authentic truth is this. You are amazing. You are valued. You are important. You're worthy of love and affection. You are not a mistake. This world needs you. You are loved. You are perfect, just as you are. You are enough.